take them down and take them down and take them down down take them take them down take them down and take them down and take them down down as you look the whole room explode explode down and take the cute As you look, the whole room down explode, explode, down explode, down Hi everyone. Um, so, hi, my name is Hagai. I'm coming from a company called Live Person. Just a hello word quick on, about myself. Uh, so my current role is the director of data services at Live Person. My entrepreneurial experience comes from a company called New Economy. We did uh, web analytics and advertising stuff. The company was acquired by Live Person. Um, basically to take everything around the data and the functionality that uh, we've built. So um, I'm going to talk about just, I'm going to talk about uh, streaming BI and how live person is utilizing the large amount of data that is coming through our pipes, uh, how we aggregate all the data, how we present it, how we do everything in streaming. Um, some talk about uh, a Lambda architecture, an architecture that was described by a person called Nathan Martz, um, and we'll go through that. Okay, so live person, just a quick words about live person. Live person is a, um, a company traded to NASDAQ, about $150 um, million annually. We've got customers from the biggest Fortune 500 companies like AT&T, Verizon, Bank of America, Apple. Um, so we're, we're pretty big uh, um, in that matter. Um, wait, jumped. Okay. So what do we do? What Live Person does is basically, uh, if you ever encountered a chat window on a website, on a retailer, that's basically what we do. So we started at the 90s. The 90s, the, the concept was fairly simple. There, we had a chat button somewhere. If you needed an assistance, you clicked on the chat. Someone really live. It's not a bot. It's not, it's not a robot that speaks to you. It's actual person that speaks to you behind the scenes and tells you and interact with you. Later on, uh, the system got more proactive. So we used our uh, predictive targeting and use our uh, algorithms that identify people that are not really sure what is it that, uh, or are hesitating between products. We identified those scenarios and we proactively engage with those customers. So if you are hesitating between, uh, I don't know, iPhone and Samsung, we could identify that and offer you a chat that would help you uh, to, to get a better decision. Uh, later on, uh, this is what we're doing today. Today, we're making everything much more proactive and much more based on machine learning algorithms. So it's all based on uh, algorithms that decides when is the right time to engage, and it's multi-channel, so it's not just chat. We are approaching uh, uh, the visitors eventually with uh, coupons, with chat, with voice sometimes. That's basically uh, uh, where we're standing now. So, why is it jumping? So, few facts about uh, Live Person. We've got around uh, 8,500 customers, uh, about half a billion unique cookies are going through our system on a monthly basis. That's pretty big. About one and a half billion visits. And we aggregate about 35 terabytes of data on a monthly basis. So it's more than a terabyte of data, the new data that the system generates every single month, every single day. So we definitely play on the, the big data world, and this is what I'm here to discuss. So who cares about data? I mean, data. I mean, it's always like this side thing, I, I want to do my operation stuff, I want to uh, sell products, I want to do, but data, who cares about the data? data? So apparently, many people really care about the data. And this is just an example on live person customers and live person users, how are they interacting with data, what they, they need. So we basically see uh, three personas, uh, major personas in our system, and I think you can take this concept into any, any big data application that you are uh, working on. So we've got the agent. The agent is the actual person that does the chat. 
We've got the agent manager who is basically managing those agents, and we've got the campaign manager, someone who's looking more holistically on the campaigns and the, and the and the performance. So agent asks himself, how do I hit my target shift? Am I doing a good job? How many sales I've had today? Agent manager is looking on it on his agent in general. How are they performing? How many people are waiting? What's the service I'm giving? And the campaign manager is looking on the visitor's behavior, general performance. So um, we've got different personas, different users of the system, and each one has a different need of, of type of data that they're looking for. So the agent manager is looking, for instance, on how long do people wait in queue. This is real-time stuff. I want to know it now. I don't want to wait uh, uh, in two hours until the system generates all the, the data and tells me how many people waiting in queue. I want to know immediately because I want to be able to take action based on that. Uh, the agents, they want to know how good they're doing. It doesn't matter if they know it's on a nanosecond or millisecond uh, latency, but they want to know if they're really on the right track today. Are they making a good job? And the campaign manager, and sometimes even the, the agent manager, they want to see some more trends, some more analytics, uh, seasonality sometimes. So it's a different, what I'm trying to say is that different people, different users of our system look at different types of data or different freshness of data. Uh, and they, that's basically the data they need to interact. So who cares about data? Who doesn't? So uh, basically, if I'm trying to, to summarize the previous slide, uh, if we take uh, two uh, axes, one would be the, uh, the latency, and the second would be complex complexity of the, the queries, complexity of the usage of data. We see that there are many different types of uh, things, different types of applications around that are playing around the different uh, of uh, complexity and latency. So KPIs, dashboards, alerts, these are all, I want to have it on low latency. I want to have it as far as fast as possible. Usually the queries are simple. Uh, if I want to go into ad hoc queries, I want to be able to give full control to analysts. Usually these are more complicated queries, and we need, and we need a, uh, um, a, a lower latency. The latency is not usually important on that case. We don't see many cases where people need real-time data and needs very complicated queries. Usually when you need real-time data, you need it on a very specific scenarios that you pre-calculated. So it's getting pretty complicated how to build a system that accommodates all this stuff. So what we did, we uh, eventually we understood that uh, we took the approach uh, by this guy, uh, Nathan Martz. Nathan Martz, just uh, quick words. Uh, he's a uh, founder of a company called Backtype. They developed uh, Storm. I don't know how many of you have heard of it. Um, I'll touch a, a little bit about it. And the company has been acquired by uh, by Twitter, and they open sourced this uh, uh, Storm. And he came up with a concept he called Lambda Architecture, and it fits very nicely into the way that we're solving the problem. So what... Nathan is saying, and I'll just read, Lambda architecture solved the problem of com uh, computing arbitrary functions on arbitrary data by decomposing, decomposing the problem into three layers, uh, batch, batch layer, serving layer, and the speed layer. So what is the batch layer? Basically, it says there's a lot of data that goes into the system. We aggregate the, the data in Hadoop. Um, I'm pretty sure everyone heard. Has everyone heard about Hadoop? Yeah, okay. So we aggregate the data into Hadoop. This is our giant repository, uh, almost a petabyte of data with, that we aggregate already on that system. And basically, that's the batch layer. The batch layer takes all the data, creates different uh, MapReduce and different uh, SQL queries on the data, and creates views out of the data. The entire process of the batch layer, this is the batch layer, right? So it takes time. It takes this. Uh, these are more... Uh, um, basically, it's a slow approach. It doesn't give all the data immediately. So that's the batch layer. Uh, what is the serving layer? The server layer are basically the batch, uh, the batch views. So we generate batch views based on the, on the batch layer. These are uh, views that are then being taken into a, a database, a relational database, or a NoSQL database. It doesn't matter. But these are just pieces of data that we take into a database, and this is what we use to run queries on. So we talked about the batch layer, the serving layer. 
The thing is that, as I said before, the serving layer gets the data. It can take hours. Sometimes you do a very complicated analytics. Sometimes you need to do uh, data cleansing, ETL, stuff that usually just uh, take time. Just uh, these are this, uh, the nature of uh, batch layer. So we're talking about we're talking about the batch layer and the serving layer. Next, we have the speed layer, and I just wanted to show you a, a video. So Twitter. Uh, found out that I hope it will work. So Twitter found out that uh, tweets get are faster than the ripple effect of earthquake, and uh, they came up with a nice video. Oops, nice. We'll gather. No. Let's try. Okay, what happens next is that he's reading his book uh, waiting for, uh, there's an earthquake in uh, Washington. He gets a tweet that there's an earthquake in Washington. He takes up the cup, wait uh, 10 seconds, then there's a, an earthquake. He puts, and uh, nothing spills for, out from, of the, uh, from the cup, and then he continues reading the book. So, nice try. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you just need the data now. You need to know as soon as, as possible when things happen, because if you know that, you can react in real time. And we're, we're a real-time business. Our uh, users of our system needs to know how to react as soon as possible with the data. So what is that? We're talking about the batch layer, the serving layer, and the speed layer. The speed layer basically is the layer that we use to do real-time aggregations and real-time calculations. <laughs> So it's getting the tweet, but goodbye. Okay, so if data comes in, data comes in, it can go into the old data repository, or Hadoop, and then it goes into the batch views, the serving layers we discussed, and some of it can also go into the speed layer being calculated in real time, create real time views, and now we can create queries that some of them are coming from the batch view, some of them are coming from the real-time view. Again, this is the Lambda architecture proposed by uh, this Nathan dude. So he came up with uh, some tools, but I'd like to go into what is it that we're building, how we built our Lambda architecture at LivePerson. So it all comes up with a um, real-time layer. The real-time layer is a layer that uh, doing the real-time stuff that we need. Some of it are doing the monitoring. We need to track to see where people are going to the websites. And some of it are doing the more applicative uh, things that we're doing, chat, voice, uh, content, stuff like that. So this is the real-time tier. What we do next is we take all the data and we just parse it into a message bus. Uh, we use Kafka. Kafka is an open source from LinkedIn that basically takes all the data into, in, uh, into that message bus and basically aggregate and, and, and expose it uh, for customers, for other clients that, to use it. The next thing we do, this is the batch layer, this is the batch path. We take all the data and directly put it into our perpetual store, into Hadoop. Uh, easy, just put the data in. Once we take the data, we aggregate, we run all kind of uh, views, as we talked about uh, Lambda architecture, we create views on the data and we put all the data into an analytic database called Vertica. Uh, it could be any database eventually that, that gets the data in. We use Vertica because of, I don't have the time to explain why. So uh, this is uh, the batch. Uh, path. We also have the real-time path, right? The, the speed layer. The speed layer is basically taking the data from Kafka, just as it would have gone into uh, the Hadoop and the Perpetual Store. It also goes into the real-time, uh, the real-time processing path. We use uh, uh, 
CEP, Complex Event Processing Tool called Storm. This is made by this uh, dude, Nathan, um, and uh, open source by Twitter. Eventually, we are doing different kind of analytics, different kind of analysis of the data, and we write everything into uh, Cassandra. This is our NoSQL repository where we keep the data. We really like Cassandra. It's a very easy to use, fast, um, in and out actions. Uh, so it's pretty um, easy to, to our service. So we have, just a quick wrap up, we have our real time, we have our message bus, some of the data goes into the, uh, the batch path, some of the data goes into the real time path. Then we, built, um, then we build UI tools. Eventually, if you don't use the data, why aggregate it? So we build uh, two UI tools to take the data. One is a more high-end business intelligence tool called MicroStrategy. This is a very classic business intelligence. Take the data, pivot, filters, alerts, all this stuff. It's mostly based on, uh, mostly based on the, the batch layer. It's more for trend analysis and stuff like that. And we have some embedded dashboards that we are currently developing. These dashboards are being embedded inside our uh, administration and configuration tool. So as you are managing your employees or as you manage your campaigns, you instantly get uh, analytics data uh, to consume. So as we talk, this path, the, the batch layer path, the data until, to, to take the data from the minute, the event happened until it gets into the system. It could easily take two to three hours sometimes. And from the the real time, the real time tier until it gets into Cassandra, it could take five seconds or even even less than that. So it's very, it's not real time embedded um, uh, uh, stuff like that, but it is pretty fast. Cool. So final word, just to wrap up what we're talking, we're talking about different customers, different users of the system. I've just, uh, someone told me that only drug dealers and developers call their customers users. But different users of the system, different users of the systems need different type of data. Uh, some needs uh, real time, some needs very close to real time. Some of it are not really interested in real time. They need a more trend analysis of the data. Um, Lambda architecture, this is basically, we follow some of the concept, not everything is, is purely like the Lambda, Lambda architecture, and there are some inherited questions inside, but I'm not gonna get into those. Uh, so we use Lambda architecture as our architecture. I know, I'm finishing. Um, live person, uh, we play with uh, big data and we do it uh, on every day. Um, just a final word, this is uh, being a little bit uh, uh, Israeli and uh, Zioni. So what is Hadoop uh, for me? I've been playing with Hadoop since 2007, so it's been quite a journey. Um, very early into the process, but uh, as I go, as the years go by, I see that it's getting very, very common in Israel to speak about big data, and we are very big in big data in Israel. And you see this is a Google trend uh, that I just took uh, from uh, yesterday. And it shows that Israel is on the ninth place that uh, uh, search for Hadoop on the internet. And these are absolute numbers. These are not uh, proportional to the population. I think it's pretty amazing. Um, all the Far East countries are on top of us, except the uh, United States. But <laughs> uh, beside that, uh, we're pretty good. Um, that's all I've got. Uh, if anyone has any question or something, I'll be happy to answer if we have time. We have no questions. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>